to Chris Broussard. Let's talk some 76ers now. They're reportedly nearing a deal to hire former Rockets GM Daryl Morey as the ba president of basketball operations. I mean, besides his sharp wit and friendly demeanor, Morey is most famous for his analytics-driven small ball approach in Houston and the wit, both the analytics and the wit. Uh, and that leaves Joel Embiid and especially Ben Simmons in a bit of an awkward position. Chris Broussard, should Doc Rivers and Daryl Morey clean house in Philadelphia now? Absolutely not. I've said for uh, the last year or so that whoever the next coach of the Sixers is should be given at least one season or really one season to see if he can maximize MB and Simmons together. Okay, get them playing great basketball together. Doc Rivers is a guy who has respect of players. He's a guy who understands how to use big men. So I think he will make Joel Embiid a better all-around player. His numbers might not be as high as they've been in the past, but I think he'll be more effective and dominant as a player with Doc Rivers. Doc is obviously coach Rajon Rondo and Chris Paul. He should be able to coach Ben Simmons. And Tobias Harris had his best seasons in, in L.A. with the Clippers under Doc Rivers as yep. the third option. So Doc, give Doc the chance to put this team together, at least a season, because their problem has never been lack of talent. It's been lack of chemistry, lack of fit, lack of playing smart basketball. If next year is another disappointing finish, then you can trade one of your big-time stars, and Daryl Morey's a guy that can get a lot in return for that. Yeah. All right, I have two major points here. One is personal and one is analytical. I'm going to start with the personal. The personal one is I am very upset and a little wounded by Daryl Morey's decision. I talked to Daryl last week. I thought I had convinced him to take a year off, relax, chill out, <laughs> and he and I had agreed that this coming basketball season we were going to potentially call basketball games together on Twitch. I was already setting out a schedule, <laughs> thought the what? whole thing was coming together. And then I got the Woj alert. Daryl didn't even give me a heads up that my big plans had been blown up and he's going to run the Sixers. So I'm mad at Daryl personally. <laughs> Analytically, I think this is super exciting for Sixers fans. And I want to correct a myth. Daryl Morey is not married to small ball. Daryl Morey is married mm -hmm. to maximizing the talent of your best player. The reason the Rockets played the way they did was because of James Harden's unique and specific skill set. Now, Wilds, Daryl Morey's never going to emphasize long twos. He's never going, there are going to be certain things that are standard. But you know what's better than a three in the NBA? Layups and free throws. And you know who's really good at getting those? Joel Embiid. And you know where the Sixers have been awful the last few years? Finding the complementary pieces. And Daryl's better at that than any GM in basketball. He found Montrezl Harrell in the second round, found Chandler Parsons in the second round, found Clint Capella at the end of the first round, finds minimum contract guys that end up becoming rotation players. So when you, while I have my own qualms with Doc, he's obviously better than Brett Brown. Daryl Morey, I yep. believe, is the best executive in the NBA. I understand Masai Ujiri would say, give me a break. It's just my personal opinion. I think this is a massive upgrade, massive upgrade from what they had off the court. And if you're a Sixers fan, of course you stand pat with Simmons and Embiid for now until you see what Daryl surrounds them with, Wilds. Yeah, I think Daryl needs to go to the poster shop and get a poster of Tim Gunn that says, make it work, because he's got to make Embiid <laughs> and Simmons work. And because you know what? They're not that far off. Dan Devine wrote an article, and I'll just pull my favorite quote from it. He says, as popular as it's been on this website and elsewhere to insist that the gargantuan Embiid-Simmons pairing is fundamentally flawed and incapable of success in the modern NBA, the Sixers still outscored opponents by about two points per 100 possessions when that pair shared the court, even during a disappointing season. If you take Horford off the court, Broussard, they get even better. <laughs> So here's the thing. you got to make Embiid and Simmons work. But I don't think you can make Horford work, and I don't think Daryl can do it either. 
So I think you got to start. The first calls he starts making is like, where's Horford going? And that, you know, dial up the trade machine. That's is it tough. Horford back to Boston for Gordon Hayward? <laughs> is, it, is it Horford to, for Buddy Heald? Is it Horford for John Wall's <laughs> terrible co contract? Is it Horford it, to Leon Rose? Hey, do you want this huge contract as it, more of a salary dump? I don't think Horford's in the plans. If I was, if I was Horford, I would, I would spend more time at IKEA getting small furniture that's mobile, let, <laughs> a little bit of investment because I don't think he's long for there, Brandon. Yeah, well, when we say blow it up, right? We're, I, I'm looking at two players. I'm looking at Embiid and Simmons. And 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 Nick, you know this better than anyone. You're, you know, you're closer to this guy than 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 anybody else. You've going on Twitch and. You're going to have a whole show. I don't know what you were yeah, creating, we were going but not you going understand to. this they guy. His his oh, M.O. <laughs> is to acquire talent, the best out there, not yeah. to get rid of them. So, no, you don't blow them up. But you got to think about the thing that's that, to me, was more intriguing. is not about the players, but what type of philosophy with his out-of-the-box way of thinking is he going to bring to this team? Now, when you talk about Horford, yeah, I, I do believe he could be a guy that's gone. When you look at the last 10 years in the NBA, whenever there's some type of trade, it seems like Maury's name is on it. He's in the mix. He's somehow trying to wheel and deal to see who he can add to the team to support his superstars. So for me, what's more intriguing is his way of thinking and his philosophy that he'll bring to this team. And, and, and I'm going to add something else, Broussard. The cupboard had become totally bare in Houston. And I know folks will say that was more he's doing. And Daryl hasn't told me this, but enough other people have reported something close to it. Tillman Fertitta said the Chris Paul contract was the single worst contract he had ever seen in the history of business. Right. Not sports, business. And so to get off that, you had to trade away all your future assets. He goes to Seven Philly, guys. which has a surplus of second round picks and all of their own picks moving forward. They, they traded away this year's first rounder, but they have a new first rounder coming in. So moving forward, you, your powder is dry, so to speak, to be able to make moves. Now the salary cap situation is a bit of a mess because of the Harris and Horford contracts that you guys talked about, Broussard. But I do think Daryl right. can make significant moves, especially with an ownership group that's got a ton of money, Jenna, mm -hmm. in a year when a lot of teams might be trying to cut salary. That's true. Yeah, I want to show you guys this. So, this is funny. One of Doc's new assistants, Dan Burke, actually called out and beat last year when he was with the Pacers. Got to be careful what you put out there. You never know how your life's going to change. He wrote, I think Embiid gets away with a ton of crap the league ignores. So Embiid tweeting, yes, sir, now we can enjoy together what the league lets me get away with. <laughs> I, I love Joel Embiid. Um, Broussard, is this something or nothing? Uh, this, well, I'll tell you what, this tells me that Dan Burke never thinks he'll be a head coach. Because you got to be careful what you say about stars. Yep. You never know who you can yep. end up coaching. Uh, but I like Embiid's approach. He had fun with it. I think when they first see each other in Philly at practice, they'll laugh about it and, and they'll be able to move on. So it's not a big deal. Yeah, I never had a situation like this with a coach, but I did have a situation like this with a player, Joey Porter, talking so much trash out there, and we were going at we're, we were going at it, and it wasn't like it was just trash talk. It was getting personal. Then we fast forward to the Pro Bowl that year. We're on the same team, and it was super awkward. And all the guys, Peyton Manning, Champ Bailey, everybody <laughs> just stood up and said, "Okay, what are you guys going to do now?" So after that, we we're able to move forward. But uh, this reminds me of that situation. And Jenna, it reminds me of when Wilds joined the show. Wilds in 2014 went on the Bill Simmons podcast and just flamed me, and I've never even mentioned it to him. You move on. You, you get together and you move on. You work together, and it was a different right time. Now. Well, let's do just that. Let's move on. Uh, take a turn. Head north to Cheese Country, or the pack is about to get the last remaining piece of what could be their championship puzzle. It's next. Broussard, thank you. Wiles, you said you didn't know...